Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Jared Brooks. My word, you said you were going to do it all week long. You said you were going to deliver the goods, paint a portrait. You did exactly that. First up, we're going to go to Nick Atkin of South China Morning Post, SEMP MMA. Go ahead, Nick. Thank you, Andrew. And um, congratulations, Jared, on another great win. Uh, you seem a little bit down on it, though. I mean, we were very impressed watching it. Um, why, why are you so being so critical of this? I just I really wanted to come out and make uh, the ultimate statement. I mean, I, I talked uh, I talked a lot of talk in this fight, and I really wanted to uh, to put a little stamp on that. If if I if I did, I haven't watched the fight yet, so um, you know I I might have I might have done better than what I thought, but in, in my personal opinion, I could have uh, I could have got him out of there uh, a little bit earlier if if I wanted to. Um, it's just it just takes a little bit more time a little bit more preparation um i got to acclimate a little bit more uh before i leave and stuff like that i was a little dizzy before i got in the octagon um i have to work on my conditioning a little bit more um work on my boxing and uh, work on my kickboxing and just work on uh, being a better mi mixed martial artist at the end of the day um but you know i'm i'm looking to to beat people with, with a stamp, like I said, and I want to be um, Joshua Posse out with a stamp, and I want to I want to put him out of there just like I did his teammate Lido, and that's the the main thing, man. I want to I want to make people realize that I am not a boring fighter. I'm somebody that can take people out no matter what. So, so you're not expecting a performance bonus then, because I know Chatri's given out a couple on live TV already, but. Uh... Please, 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 Shatri. If I could get 50 bands, bro, oh my lord. Shatri, I, I, I would kiss you. I, I know you don't want to be kissed, but I would, I, would, I would kiss Shatri right now. And I think that I did a lot of promotional things that a lot of other fighters uh, didn't do this week. And, um, you know, to put one on the map and put myself on the map as well. I'm willing to grow with this company as much as possible and uh, do whatever they want me to do to, um, to satisfy the needs of the fans and the promotion and myself. And I can't thank one enough for uh, giving me that, you know, that thing to where I can, I can get big and people will want to watch me. Um, I can be the heel, but I can also um, be the champ. You know, I don't, I'm not necessarily a heel, but I, I do talk the talk and I walk the walk in this division. Um, and I want to do that in flyweight as well. And if, if I could fight Demetrius Johnson in a year and a half, that would be an absolute dream come true. Demetrius Johnson is, is my all time uh, superhero. He's the reason, one of the reasons why I wanted to start mixed martial arts. So um, if I got to fight him, man, that would just be a dream come true. Well, I might quickly ask you about Demetrius in a sec. But uh, I just wanted to say that Joshua has uh, put a post on Facebook saying uh, they've seen nothing yet. This is my division. Um, so I want to get your reaction. Well, I mean, I've watched a lot of other uh, opponents that have fought. Um, you know, you got Alex Silva. I think that he's somebody that um, that is a perfect portrayal of of what I am, but he's a little bit less. So um, you watch Alex Silva versus uh, Joshua Posse. I know Josh has probably gotten a little bit better and he's going to be watching a lot of uh, video on me. But um, I think Joshua is deep down inside shitting himself. Um, I, don't, I don't think he wants to, uh, wants to fight me anytime really soon. I think he, he probably wants to fight me in like, like July or something like that. But he can take as much time as he wants to prepare. Uh, like I said, I think I could be Joshua Posse out right now. And, um, and yeah, he's super tough, and uh, I got to give him kudos for holding the belt as long as he has. But he's gotten beat by people like Saruta, and he has gotten better, don't get me wrong. But I'm not Saruta. I'm not these other guys. Like I said in my rap, like you can beat Lido Adewang, Alex Silva, but guess what? I'm Jared. I'm somebody that is, is willing to, to put my heart and my mouth on the line. And, um, and yeah, I, I don't say anything that I don't mean. And I, sorry, I know um, there's some other media here. I just wanted to have one more quickly. Sorry, um, are you willing to get back in there maybe for March 26th? Is that too soon? If they say Joshua Pastio, Jared Brooks for the uh, strawweight title at 1X, would you do it? I, I am uh, a company man. If Shatri, if any, uh, if Rich, if Matt, if all of these guys want me to fight, 
um, in March, I would be more than happy to. I'm uh, I'm looking to get a lot of cash and get some belts. So um, yeah, I want to spring spring myself into this promotion as much as possible. And um, I love my fans, man. The fans are, are absolutely. There was only 200 fans here, and uh, just you know, getting getting involved with the fans was super cool. We've got lots of questions coming in from our media, so we're going to go now to Jay Anderson from Cage Side Press. Go ahead, Jay. Thanks very much, Jared. Congratulations on the win. I know you did sound a little a little down about it, but I'm curious. At the end of the first round, you really had him hurt. You had him bloodied. Were you surprised by his toughness in this fight? Man, wow. He is a they should call him this Japanese zombie. That kid is very hard to finish, um, and he's super super crafty on the ground. Um, a lot more than like I said. Uh, to the outside eye, but um, but yeah, he he was super crafty, and you you have to worry about Hiroba no matter what, and he's young too, so uh, I know that he's gonna be hunting to to get that win back in the next few years, and um, yeah, utmost respect to Hiroba Minowa. That kid is uh, is a gangster for sure. Good stuff. I think you might have just given him a new nickname there. And, uh, you know, you've been excited, uh, kind of fired up all week. And obviously you did the uh, the promo uh, thing. How exciting and motivational for you is it to be back on a big stage like this? Man, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, One Championship has uh, treated me nothing less than like family. Um, they they want to promote me. They want to put me on the on the spotlight. And that's what I was born to do ever since, um, you know, I was born my dad always told me that uh, I was going to be a super superstar. It doesn't matter if it was acting, if it was singing, um, you know, rapping, anything like that. Um, I'm I'm willing to go and put my uh, my heart and soul out to the camera, and um, and yeah, I'm going to fight for it too. And last one for me. You've talked about wanting to get not just a belt, but belts, obviously, moving up and uh, getting a second one. If you were to do that, would it be a permanent move, or would you want to go back and forth try to defend both titles? Hey, man. Um, <laughs> I think it was Mike that told me uh, when I weighed in. He was just like, damn, dude, you could fight an atom weight. I, I really, really believe that uh, no matter what my weight class is, I can fight anybody. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm going to fight Bibiano Fernandez <laughs> or uh, John Lineker or anything like that. But uh, in the flyweight division, yeah, I, I could I could still weigh 124 pounds. It, like, I I beat Davis and Figueredo when he weighed 149, and so I can fight these 35 pounders. I'm just as strong. I just gotta be in a little bit more um, conditioning shape. But yeah, I'm I'm looking and I'm hunting to go against some of the best in the world, no matter what. I'm willing to test myself. Let's go to Conan from Conan Daily. Uh, just one question for me. Uh, you and Joshua Pascio are both uh, well-rounded fighters, but uh, um, why do you think should Joshua be scared of you? That's that's a weird question, but I think that Josh knows why he, he should be afraid. Uh, he's never fought another person like me inside of the circle. I know that, um, that Josh has been watching me ever since I beat Lito. And um, I think he's been watching me ever since I was in the UFC. So, yeah, I think he, he should be worried. And um, my tool belt is a little bit heftier than his, for sure. Next up, we are going to go to Ivan Stewart from Philippines News Agency. Ivan, go ahead. Lito, you already mentioned Lito Adiwang earlier. And Joshua, Joshua said in an previous interview that they're, all, they're looking for a rematch between you and, and what is and Lito, so who are you looking for to face next if ever Joshua is not available? Are you going for Lito again or someone else? Um, I'm willing to go against anybody. Um, could be flyweight, could be, you know. But Joshua, if he doesn't, you know, if he isn't ready to fight me, then why be the champion? You should be ready. You should be ready right now. So um, I know that the, that the Filipino culture absolutely loves Joshua Paseo and Lito Adewang. And, you know, they, they want to make excuses on how uh, Lito got beat and stuff like that. And, you know, oh, it's a fake growing, growing thing or whatever like that. But, you know, I beat Lito Adewang at least seven to eight minutes out of that fight. He didn't. He hit me like one time. So, um so yeah, I think it's just a bunch of excuses, and and they have hardcore MMA fans. So I can't I can't really uh, stipulate on you know the, the reason why Joshua wouldn't want to fight me, but 
I know that Joshua wants to fight me. I think he wants the heat. I think he wants the smoke. So Joshua Paciel, let's get it, baby. Next up, we have Dylan Bowker from My MMA News. Dylan, go ahead. Appreciate you taking my call. I'm just curious because there's been a couple references to the post-fight interview being described as a promo, and you were talking about how you can sometimes play the heel a little bit. How much of that pro wrestling psychology informs the approach? Like you got the monkey mask and everything too. Um, you know, I was a really big fan of WWE and stuff like that, but it isn't really about that for me. It's just uh, trying to get my name out there no matter what, um, you know, and get fans. It's not even about like, you know, me trying to, to just go straight, straight promotion all the time. Anytime I speak, it is uh, certain truths in that. So I'm not just uh, speaking bull crap, you know. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if it is a promo, it's a promo. I, I speak my truths. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And just another follow-up question, because I thought this was really cool. I saw on your Instagram a few days ago, you got a shout-out from Tommy Hitman Hearns there. So can you talk about how that helped getting a shout-out from the Motor City Cobra? Yeah, man. Ah, man, I, I got to meet Tommy a couple of times because I'm in Detroit. And, um, yeah, that guy is one of my heroes for sure. Uh, I actually was studying him. Uh, while I put his highlight video out, I was just like, "Man, how can I hit like Tommy and and get uh and get a, get those knockouts like Tommy?" But uh, yeah, Tommy, man, if you're watching, we absolutely love you in Detroit and uh, all around the the world and the United States for sure. Our next question comes from Andres of MMA Uno. Andres, you're up. Hello, Jared. Congratulations for your victory. So I would like to ask you, uh, how much did you enjoy the rules here? You fought everywhere on the biggest stages. Tonight, we saw you combining knees on the ground, striking heavily, uh, then looking for a submission in an exciting round where you almost finished the fight. So I would like to know, do, do you like the rules more here? I love them. Um, I think one does it the best as far as, you know, hydration, weight, um, everything that is involved in inside of the organization. I think they have geniuses running it. Uh, Shatri is, is definitely a genius. Uh, when it comes down to MMA, he's been doing mixed martial arts his whole life, so I would expect nothing less. And then the last question, uh, you know that for months uh, now there has been a talk of who has a better roster between UFC and, and, and one championship. And Davidson Figueredo, he was crowned champion again recently. He's one of your two defeats and, and your important career. It was a split decision that could go either way in that moment. So do you see the possibility of facing each other again? And how do you see this fight ending? Ah, oh, man, I would love to fight Davis and Figueredo again. And um, if you looked at any of the uh, the people that have watched that fight, that was, uh, you know, catching the stats, catching, you know, uh, of who got the decisions. I got completely robbed in that fight. Um, Davis and Figueredo knows that. He even admitted it after the fight. One Championship is is a worldwide organization, and we treat the the athletes, like we are one, like we're a family. So, um, so I think that we have a little bit more longevity as far as uh, fights, and we bring the mixed martial arts aspect. We don't really, uh, you know, bring that uh, that super fight all the time kind of deal. I know we have the the DJ and Rod Tang thing going on, but that's just something different. That's that's an amazing fight, and I can't wait for that either. But um, yeah. Bring it, Davison Figueredo, Brandon Moreno, all those top five guys. Bring it over here to one championship, and I promise you, it isn't going to go how they think it is going to go. We go now to Kyle Siegel from the Gion Live Network. Hey, Jared, how you doing? Oh, man, I can't complain. Got off of a win. Wish I would have knocked him out, but got off a win, that's for sure. Yeah, no, congratulations regardless. But yeah, this is Kyle Siegel with the Go and Live Network. It's funny you mentioned Demetrius Johnson being your idol because Demetrius used to just overwhelm flyweights with the speed. And it seems like you're doing exactly that to all these strawweights right now. Man, I, I, I mean, strawweights, they're, they're faster than flyweights. So um, I think I could do the same thing at flyweight at the end of the day. But yeah, Demetrius Johnson, if you're watching this, man, utmost respect. You are the, the best of all time, in my opinion. And um, to share the circle with you would be a complete honor. And um, yeah, uh, you know, Matt Hume, I, I've studied a lot of Matt Hume too. And one of my old coaches, I I would say he's like uh, Matt Hume-esque. So I feel like we're in the in the same realm of, of dimensions a little bit. So that'd be really, really cool if we could get a fight before uh, before it's too late. 
That's awesome. And, you know, it's funny they, they mentioned Davison with him and Moreno. And, you know, those two guys solidified themselves as, like, you know, kind of these top two in the UFC. And meanwhile, you're over here and, you know, some people thought you won that fight. So what kind of, like, motivation does that give you, you know, knowing that you can compete with the very best in the world, you know, basically the champion in a, in, in a flyweight division? I think 90% of people thought I won that fight. I mean, if you... I thought you won, so... <laughs> yeah, you, can, you, can, you can watch that fight tomorrow, you know, and... and uh, but, yeah, I, I think it, it's given... It isn't really giving me as much confidence because I know, you know, the years go by and, and people fight different every fight, you know, but, um, but yeah, I, I put out the game plan to beat Demetrius... Or, not Demetrius, but Davison. And um, <clears throat> I think that Brandon Moreno, he should have he kept that game plan on taking Davison to the mat after, you know, punching him a couple of times. But uh, if Davis and I fought again, I promise you I'd beat Davison uh, pretty good. All right. Up next, it's Noble CFR Network. Monkey God, where in, where did you get that title each from, sir? Uh, so I was a really big fan of Dragon Ball Z, and um, I study a lot of religions and stuff like that in Hanuman. Um, he's one of the wind gods of strength and, um, in, in Hinduism. And, um, I, I did a, a lot of studying on, um, on all of that. And I felt like it really, really uh, accumulated with my personality and the way that I fight. And, uh, everybody used to call me a monkey as far as my grappling ability and, and how strong I can be for how small I am. So, um. So yeah, I just uh, I, f- I figured that it went really well with my personality and the way I fight. Excellent, excellent, good, good, good combination and good, good pick of a name. Um, what are your? If you could paint a perfect picture for the growing year of twenty twenty one, how would it all play out for you, sir? So in twenty twenty two, I would say I I beat Pasiao in in either March, April, or May. And then, um, you know, I, I def- either defend my belt or if they want me to, to move up or, you know, if, if even Demetrius couldn't fight Rotang, I would, I would pop in and I would fight Rotang. I think I could, I could last around. I think I'd run away from Rotang for about three minutes. And after that, <laughs> after that, uh, that second round, I think that I could, I could definitely beat Rotang. Thank you. And finally, we're going to finish up with Ernest Leo Hernandez of Sports Kida. Go ahead, Ernest. Hey, Jared. Uh, big fan of yours. I'm a Filipino uh, writer, but uh, you made me a fan for quite a long time already. Oh, but- man. First Filipino to love me. Holy shit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Jared, uh, you, you, uh, the title right now in the flyweight division is held by Adriano Moraes. Uh, your thoughts about uh, his defeat, uh, his his win over Demetrius Johnson, and how will you uh, deal with someone like Adriano? Adriano Moraes is really, really tough. We've trained in the past at American Top Team when I was over there when I was like 20 years old. Um, me and him have actually had a, a go back and forth. He, I remember when I was about to fight Lito Adewang, he was just like, please beat this motherfucker. And I'm just like, well, I'm sorry, Adriano. But when we were training, I was, I was, I mean, I know it's training, man. And I don't really like to bring training into the picture, but you know, you got to get into somebody's head somehow. And Adriano Moraes, you know what I did to you. And, um, and I could completely control you on the ground and that's your specialty. So um, yeah, I think I could, I could, uh, I could give Adriano Moraes a, a run for his money. That's for sure. Okay, my second question is about, of course, uh, I, I'm following you on Twitter, and I saw your tweet about uh, Figueredo, and of course, I, I saw that fight. I mean, um, I was overwhelmed. I, I'm, I'm also uh, against the decision. But uh, you, you told in your Twitter that uh, you, you figure out Figueredo before everyone. So maybe you can give us that micro perspective. Of course, no one has ever figured out Figueredo but by that time. But what did you see in that, in in, in his style that made you uh, question everyone uh, uh, about that win? Um, I seen he was just super slow and powerful. So if you're fast and you're agile and you can um, you can throw punches like that that's one thing that I would have done differently in the first round I you know I would have took him down same way same you know same first round second round I would have 
throwing a little bit more punches because he was so tired after, you know, being taken down that many times and trying to get back up. So um, I would have thrown a little bit more punches and then uh, followed it up with a little cherry on top of, of taking him down again and, and still brutalizing him like I did. All right. Thank you, Jared. More power to you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. You're the man. I appreciate you. My Filipino fan, my only Filipino fan. That is great. You gotta love that. Thank you so much to the media for your questions. Do stay with us. In the meantime, Jared Brooks, congratulations. Absolutely buzzing to have you in one championship. I think the fans are too. Congrats on the win.